This is pure tenacity. Where does that come from? Um, I think... I don't know. I, you know, look, man, some people, they, they, they want to have a family. They want to... And they just know they want to do that. Mm. And then there are people like me that just know that this is what I was born to do, uh, to bring people together through music. Mm. That's it. And I've always known that. And I think when I was younger, there was a lot of I wanted to be famous and mm. stuff like that. But, you know, after a while that becomes, especially later in life, that becomes, that diminishes because I've had all the fame I could possibly want. Mm. And I got to see what it would be like, you know, when I sold three million records and I was living in America and I signed to Sony and I got to see, you know, I was going to the Grammys. I got to see what the other side of the coin was like. Casual, casual. It's not actually that fun. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Here's some trouble for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, you know the key, you know the deal. Um, big shout graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight to all the regulars, people who've got the Television app for your sport and art and all those sorts of sins, you know how to do, go get it, free download, Apple, iPhone, um, on your app store, uh, hold tight Strange Station and everybody else that follows, sharing is caring, that's what we say around here, we have <coughs> an entrepreneurial expert in the world of music first and foremost, but let me just start by saying I grew up listing avidly to the mixes of this lady and to have her on the show drum and bass royalty if you're out there get your hands together dj rap inside the place <laughs> what an intro. thank you <laughs> come on I can, hey listen i have to i have to be honest to, to even have a conversation with your phone you know the, the young man in me was just like if i'd ever thought in that time you must get there quite a lot because you are constantly out on the road active doing things all the time and bringing new people into the fold people of all different ages and demos you know you, you must get that quite a bit what i get is when people come up to me and they're like oh you know you think they're going to say something really and I go, my dad loves you <laughs> That's always the best. That, that will always keep you humble no matter where you um no matter how far you progress let's put it that way but yeah no it's good you look exactly how you looked when I first saw you DJ, I don't know how you do it. I don't know what's in your cereal. You looking good, girl. No cereal. <laughs> well, that's the trick, right? No, I, th I think, you know, it's a bit freaky. I know, because people are like, you still sort of look the same. And, you know, I'll be, what, 54 in December. Not having it. This is, we, I'm just we, not having it. We, yeah. mute, we mute these ages, you know, in this podcast. I, I swear to God, you I'm wouldn't. proud of it. I don't care. Uh, because I think, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, you wear your life on your face. Mm. I am, um, for the most part, pretty content mm -hmm. and I have purpose. And so, you know, but yeah, I look after myself. I go to the gym, mm. lift those weights four mm. times a week and try not to eat mm. too much crap and just try to stay active, you know. Mm. Also, maybe not being married and not having kids and a husband helps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, uh, no, no, hold on. That's some real talk from somebody that has expertise in the field of music. That's oh. the fact. You know, when you're self-employed and doing it and moving and shit, you... <clears throat> It sounds selfish, but actually it's the complete opposite. It's best not to have too many responsibilities. I was just going to say the reason is, is that I think if I had, and I've never been that sort of broody chick, my child was always music, mm. you know, um, and I've always been that way. But I think this would terrify me as a living. Can you imagine? Yeah. I couldn't. I, I just, I can, you know, I can take care of myself and mm. if I don't have enough to eat, mm. I'm okay with mm. that. If I have plenty to eat, I'm okay with mm -hmm. that. But... There's been times in my career which has spanned decades now where, you know, I've been super well off mm. and then there's been years where it's been famine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. you know, thank God I didn't have a family, mm. you know. Can you imagine? No, I'm exactly, like, there's some things that I can tolerate but I wouldn't want someone else to go through it. Not on my watch. Mm -hmm. That's hard, isn't it? I can just imagine the kind of parent I'd be about. Right, you, you and you, <laughs> off to the Mickey Mouse Club, you're making some money. Yeah, Your mother's yeah. a DJ, she's not doing so well. 
Off you go. <laughs> Off you go. Get out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And take these C- mix CDs with you. <laughs> Start flying. We're going. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> you, you we're going. <laughs> you hear these stories, don't you? I mean, I admire. I admire the the, the DJs and the artists that, that have kids. I, I can you imagine on the flip side the tenacity of uh, of a artist that has a, you know plus two or more kids and are just going for it. That the the levels of commitment there, are, you know, that they're, they're, they're maybe. You know, put it in context. If 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 I had that in my life, would I be in a different cir- set of circumstances in in the music world? Just because I had to somehow galvanize and get over some finishing lines. I don't know. Nothing lights a fire like fear. <laughs> so <laughs> probably, but at the same time, I think once you've accomplished a certain level of success, then I think you know a lot of people then start to look towards family and things mm. like that because they're like, what am I going to do mm-hmm. later and mm. all of this stuff. But um, yeah, I you know I, f- I feel for people who you know mm. are, are just starting out, but they've got kids or they've and, and mm. they know they've got to probably take a. Mm, a job to keep, you know, their feet on terra firma Mm, whilst they're pursuing their dreams. And that's really tiring. So I have Mm. nothing but mad respect for people who are like, well, I work, but I do this Mm. and I run a label in my spare time. And, you know, and I've got a little boy or a girl and I'm just like, whoa. Yeah, big that up. Oh, and while we're on the subject of bigging up and somebody that helps at least parent elements of my my career, big shout out to Tanya. (laughs) So brought us together, brought us together, didn't she? She, It was, was, but although I will say we did cross paths uh, in such a grandiose way uh, on my Killer Killer live show. That was the first proper time, wasn't it? That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, big up to, uh, you know, I'd like to say hi to Chris, my agent, who's amazing, and Mm. Tanya. Tanya, who's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful person. Mm. And she's she's all about bringing people together and, mm. and doing that, you know. Unification. Yes. 100%. Um, you're venturing, well, um, um, we will go to the beginning of things, but um, with the Killer Keller live show, you know, that's a huge undertaking and that's something that you're embarking on at the moment. We need to get in some of the uh, latest stuff. So there's a lot of things that are going on at the moment that mirror what is actually happening in the social media world. I mean, you're ahead of the game right now, aren't you, in terms of content? I think that maybe I was lucky if we sort of roll it back a bit. It, it came out of, as most things do, uh, when something happens, a need happens. So when lockdown happened, and if I just go a bit further back, if I, if I may. Absolutely get it. Um, you know, I'd been living in America since, mm. well, pr- at least 22 years in Los Angeles. Absolutely, yeah. And I'd been sort of coming back and forth here. And um, it was actually Fabio who was like, you know, you should start coming, but it's really good, the music, and, you know, mm. you should be part of this. And I'd started to come back, and I spend two weeks at you know v-dub's house or Mm, mm. people's house and then i'd just go raving and Mm -hmm. i was falling back in love with it and um and just enjoying and seeing what was happening and then i decided to make the move um properly when brexit sort of happened because i don't actually have a british passport i have an italian passport and an american passport Mm. and boris was like if you're not here by the 31st of october then you can never live here again and i was like but I like it here. I always thought I could come back and you yeah, know, yeah. do what I'm doing. I never quite lost touch with it. But so I moved back here and, you know, I had like basically I would say nearly a good 15 months of work lined up. Thank you, Chris. Um, and it was wonderful and everything was great. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, been dating an English guy for a while and we'd been doing the long distance thing. And, you know, so it all seemed to make sense. Mm-hmm. And then lockdown happened <laughs> right after I moved and all my work got cancelled. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Broke up with a boyfriend because he moved in with me and then, then you find out who really is what. <laughs> yeah, I think we sure. both found out who we really were <laughs> and decided to amicably split. But, um, y- you know, it was I, – I found myself stuck alone, all my friends and network being in another country mm. and no work. And you know those – Mm. You, you know when you see dog walkers walking their dogs and there's certain dogs that have a pack on their back and they're working harder. Yeah. I like to work. You probably know I'm a workaholic yes. already. So, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I do enjoy it. Yeah, you do. Don't and know. if you're on the social media, it's like there is no lady, there is no human <laughs> right about now that can run faster than DJ Rap. I swear to God. But it's um, But the thing is, so, you know, I decided, like, how can I get to know people? 
what can I do? And just before the lockdown happened, I'd moved into this wonderful place and, um, you know, I had all my vinyl and I thought, well, it'd be really cool to actually start playing vinyl again. Maybe I'll do that. So I spent, I did this post. And if you look at the timestamp mm. of this post, if you find it, I put, um, you know, a time lapse camera up in the corner of my room and I started categorizing all my records so they'd all be in order chronologi chronologically. Mm. I think it was two weeks later when the actual first lockdown happened. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm absolutely ready to stream. And what better way? because everyone's a captive audience. What mm. better way to announce that I'm back yeah. and to just do as many streams as I can. Killed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, the thing is, is that to play all those records and hear them, and what I realised I'm doing is is making myself feel good, but also at the same time bringing all these memories, which is what I do on my TikTok, just bring these good memories back to people. And mm. also a little bit of like, hey, here's some music you might not know. Because mm. it's not all about the modern drum and bass. I go from new to old and flick back and forth. And when I stream for my, you know, for my tribe members mm. and all that stuff, it's all different music constantly. But that's how that happened. And that's where it was sort of born out of a need mm. to reach out the antidote of the lockdown was to meet people for me because it was such a lonely experience. Reset as well. And get, into reset. The, get into the, get back into the passions, isn't it? Yeah. The amount of people that said the same sort of thing. I guess chronologically pulling all your records into that place, you rekindled, and the next thing, you know, you're creating, for adversity, you're creating this togetherness with, with the thing that you love. That's something huge, isn't it? Yeah, I think as well... Um, it just it would have driven me crazy not having something to do because, mm. because you know, I'd spent a lot of money to get here and my just shipping the dog was like, you know, I flew. What's the dog's name? Hakima. Big up, Kima. Come Big on. Big up, Kima, you 16 <laughs> year old OG. <laughs> Damn, 16 year old. She's Shipped like, over? Yeah. How long well, was no, I flew, I flew with her, oh, she, but good. she was in, you know, they don't let the dog sit on your lap. So it was, it was a scary thing to have your older dog but she was great she was a trooper but you know I spent all this money to get here and it was yeah it was just like okay you know I can't just sit in this place and do nothing and wait for and I I knew right away when the first lockdown happened I was mm -hmm. like this is going to be a long one and I think everybody sort of was saying no it'll be it'll be this mm -hmm. I think a lot of people thought it was just going to be over with mm -hmm. for some reason I just felt that this was the beginning of probably a series of this sort of behaviours and mm. I don't know, it, it didn't bode well for me. Yeah. So I, th I thought, right, I'm going to learn how to do as much as I can and this is where sort of my directional, because I'm, I, I'll, I'll get into the whole film thing in a second, but, you know, I did a lot of acting in LA and so I learned a lot of stuff about camera work and things like that. Not mm. much, but enough. When you're an actor and you're on set, you pick up things and, you know, it, I, I of course here the technology was a little different, so I was doing streams with... You know, remember, it was just on Facebook yeah, with, yeah. like, multiple phones and it was just a nightmare. Tapping out, tapping it, copyright. Da, 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 yeah. So I learned how to, <laughs> you know, put this stuff together and then I got real equipment and then I learned how, to, and then I got a licence and then I, you know, built my own website and I was like, I'm, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it to such a professional Football level. going in. Yeah, yeah, I don't want it to look like I'm in my kitchen just DJing, you know. Mm. <laughs> Probably would have been fine, but... I wanted it to look as professional as possible, so I got uh, one of those um, black magic switcher boxes, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know what they are, but so when you're DJing, yes, I do, of course, yes. It's so great, heavy because, duty stuff. Because before I had three mobile phones, and you had yeah. to download everything and then yeah. edit. Yeah. So I learned how to edit film. I learned how to, you know, direct my own camera shots. I learned how to light, and it all took time. And then I learned how to do makeup. I'd spend in the night times watching YouTube and TikTok. See? Not TikTok. Like, if you're feeling in any way that you're feeling a little underachieved right here, you know, you should be, yeah. Get, can, I, can I tell you, I was the in. worst at that. I was so terrified of technology. <laughs> so if anyone out there is feeling like that sounds like a lot, I, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. and, but you know what? You can absolutely learn it. And, uh, you know, I've learned to dive in and lean into things that scare me rather than mm. be like, but I used to be really frightened. I still get, Terrible technical anxiety before anything. Resistance in the mind. People think it's a resistance coming from other people. It's not. It's you're in your head, You're isn't it? Absolutely right. Mm. You're absolutely right. So there was a company that I called. I did the Moon Dance um, show, 
And that that company that I that I worked with, Mark um, Callahan, was like, look, you know, we can come to your house, set you up with all the gear, teach mm. you how to use it. Nice. And uh, the Black Magic Switcher Box is awesome because as I'm DJing, so I've got four Go, I've actually got eight GoPros. Yeah, you can multi, you can have as many as you want in this box. Yeah. Well, I've got eight GoPros. One is my on the road kit. Yeah. four of them and the other four is my static kick yeah. that stays at home so I've got if you can imagine a camera in front of the decks one here one here one here right yeah, so yeah, all yeah. shots are covered and they're attached to the black magic switcher box so as I'm DJing when I'm about to do the drop I just click camera one yeah. and then, so every yeah. time I do a drop I just click it's like having a little guitar pedal amp thing yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, using yeah, it yeah, and yeah. it's so it looks beautiful mm. and everything's 4k mm. and, and of course that will sound straight out the mixer so I wanted if I'm if I'm if people are blessing me and paying and I started a Patreon and then moved to my own website because Wicked. the content I didn't want any social media platform mm. to have any um, hold on me overriding control on yeah. what your content I want to create yeah. planet rap yeah. for me I want to create the, con the content plus there were things that were missing like you couldn't do trial periods you couldn't offer coupons you couldn't let people try it and see if they like it. You was mm. immediately forcing people mm. to pay. Mm. And I didn't like that idea for myself. So, you know, I spent like eight grand, got a new website built and uh, just invested heavily in the business. So now fast forward two years, I've learned all this, the content's flowing. I've got this tribe. I've built this community. Out of that community, um, I've got an accountant, my best friend. I've, I've met my best friend. I've got drivers. I mean, everyone I know in my universe is from this community oh, that I built. God, that's so cool. And some of them I've known 15 years, you yeah, know, like yeah. Brian Collins, you know, and, and people like that who, you know, is the most amazing accountant. And mm. But people who, it, it's not just people who followed me for years, but this whole community and everyone, of course, you know, whilst this pandemic was happening in lockdown, we did quizzes. Mm. I mean, I worked relentlessly, but it was such a buzz. How much yeah. of that is... You, you, you have a lot of desire. There's a lot of huge drive coming from over over your sides right now. I think... Like, energy. Yeah, man, it's like, yeah. It's, and it, it, it's, it's, the synergy plays a part in this. But to a lot of people out there listening, um, because what you're talking about is not a given. This is this is pure tenacity. Where does that come from? Um, I think I don't know. I, you know, look, man. Some people they 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 want to have a family. They want to, and they just know they want to do that. Mm. And then there are people like me that just know that this is what I was born to do. Uh, to bring people together through music. Mm. That's it. And I've always known that. And I think when I was younger, there was a lot of, I wanted to be famous and mm. stuff like that. But, you know, after a while that becomes, especially later in life, that becomes, that diminishes because I've had all the fame I could possibly want. Mm. And I got to see what it would be like, you know, when I sold three million records and I was living in America and I signed to Sony and I got to see, you know, I was going to the Grammys. I got to see what the other side of the coin <coughs> was like. Casual, casual. It's not actually that fun. I can I can only imagine it's, it's not, a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a organized kind of it's, show up. It's kind of stiff and I remember mm. I remember many times and especially when I was at the Grammys thinking it's much more fun when I'm DJing and I'm being an underground rock mm. star. Mm. <laughs> Cuz can you imagine as well and this was before mm. the internet and phones and the mistakes that I would have made. I mean I I think and there's a uh, I'm going to throw some country at western at you now but there's a great Garth Brooks song. Come on, rap. Which is unanswered prayers. And I think it's true. I think sometimes the best thing that can happen to you is the stuff that doesn't. Oh my, come. <laughs> you know? A thousand percent. <laughs> right? Under, oh, so I used to wish more. that I could be, and then I thought, God, you couldn't handle that. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my desire and tenacity became of when I realised that what I actually want is to create for others and not really more about myself. Mm. But that took a lot, long time because mm. I had to put, Certain egos in check, yes, yes, mine, yes. and I had to lose everything to start again. And there was a long story, and uh, you know, but eventually the lesson, the penny dropped. And and now that tenacity is about, you know, I like entrepreneurship. I like the business end. Um, I'm 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 happy in front of the cameras, but I'm also happy to bring in new blood because how long can you maintain? You know, I I, I enjoy the back end of the business. Mm -hmm. I think more. I find that intriguing and mentally challenging, and I like that. That's the the pack that I wear. Love so yeah, I like it. it, you know. But um, that's how that whole thing came about. And then I started a new venture. The tribe is now in its third year and growing. 
hard. And so what I decided to do is get some investors. So I went to America a couple of weeks ago and I had a proposal ready for a certain amount of investors and I managed to get some investors and I'm Congratulations. developing... Congratulations. Come on. <laughs> and I'm developing a YouTube show right now, which is yeah. called Playing With The Boys and what I will be doing... We're, we, can we talk about this in, in greater detail? Or is we this can. Just a, yeah, we excellent. Can, we can, Let's we can, go. We can. Basically, I want to... It's, it's fun, but there are... It's also scary, right? Because there's so many things that can go wrong with something like this. Like, this isn't just my venture. I've got business partners now and a yeah. responsibility and yeah. there's contracts and... Deliverables, deliverables and things like and that. and things that have to happen. So you're like, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> what have I got myself into? It's okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a lengthy process to get the contracts done and all of this stuff. But the premise of the show is like, I said to them, I want to combine. <laughs> you might have noticed on my Instagram, I'm constantly traveling. Yes. Too light to travel. All the time. <laughs> yeah. And and even if I'm not working, I'll just get on a plane and go. Mm -hmm. And this is why lockdown was, you know, was, it was a good lesson in stillness, but mm. I could not wait to get the, out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and just travel. So I, uh, you know, my, my, one of my best friends, big up Julia. I'll type Julia. Uh, who is also um, handling the uh, tour manager side of things for this show and putting it together with me is um, she's able to travel just as much as I am. So we were like, shall we just travel every five weeks somewhere for mm. five days? Mm. And so I said to these investors, like, what I'm trying to do is combine <laughs> my love of travel, adventure and music and almost like sort of Anthony Bourdain meets festivals, meets, you know, travel show sort mm. of thing. And how can I do that? And I came up with a concept and a treatment that I'd written. And I actually written the, uh, wrote the treatment about seven years ago. And I've just kept it and never, you know, done anything with it. And I, I, I always had dreams of, like, I want to sell a show to Netflix eventually. So, you know, as this treatment was in my drawer, I then revamped the treatment up and uh, talked to a couple of producers because opposite where I lived was the producer for um, The Witcher. And so he gave me a load of tips of how to, you know, write a treatment. Pretty big, wow. Wicked. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, I got this investment. And basically the, the premise is, is that wherever I play that's a little bit interesting, um, there is an... We, we go away for four to five days. Mm. There's an activity that has to be done. And then there's a festival. And I invite somebody from my subscriber group and I pay for all their expenses and they come out and experience that four days with me. So the first one is Croatia. So they're coming to the Outlook Festival. What? And um, we're do and the reason it's called Playing With The Boys is because, you know, I'm hand I'm I am playing with the male DJs and all that stuff. But also we're doing activities that... Let's just say I like mm, car mm. racing, driving tanks, shooting rifles. It's just, it's, I like them more. Yeah, this is crazy. I like them more sort of, but it won't be painting my nails, put it that You're way. You're going to be like the Judas Chalmers meets Annika <laughs> Rice of like the, the music world. You're just going to be... <laughs> And look, if I'm not playing at a festival, we'll still go and do something fun, you know, and go exotic. So, so yeah, so, it, you know, basically people who sign up to the tribe, I will say as a caveat, though, it's there are three levels to the tribe. And, and uh, just so, to be transparent for everyone, there is the proper fan, super fan and VIP. And it is only available for super fans and VIPs. And those levels are $2.99, $14.99 and then £99. So just make sure you know Pay the damn money. (laughs) Get it. 14 quid, man. Most people, that's nothing. And if you see how much content people get every week, it's absurd. I mean... I, you know, one of the things when I did start Patreon, and, and look, they were great. They gave me a lot of good advice. So, like, don't overpromise mm. because then you'll have a short future in this. You'll be tired and burned out. Burning yourself to death. And then you realize. So, I, you know, planning mm. that Patreon before I turned it to my website took three months to get the mm. content and the strategy right so that it would be deliverable in a way. Mm. You know, I made mistakes along the way, but, you know, most of the time it's like, okay, so it should be digital, and if you're doing physical content, it needs to be like this, and how do I structure this so that mm. I'm not going to get tired and bored after three months, you know. And, wow. um, yeah, it's a lot of – it's a lot, but now it runs like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, I can imagine so. Um, your fingers on the pulse. How many fingers? Ten? How many <laughs> things you doing at once? There, there Actually, has... not that many. Just the things that that does all does sound make like a sense. lot though. Well, there's running the label, right? Making music, mm. your social media, and this show. And True. It, if you think about it, it's yeah. all part of the same tree. And to me, they're all branches that help that tree stay rooted firmly and and grow. So I I don't 
I'm not a believer in doing so many things that you're burnt out, and I must be incredibly organised. I'm talk to me about the organisation. That's what I'm really coming to. How yeah. do you how do you get? What, explain a DJ rap day. Let's just get into it from the basic bare bones. Like, how do you structure that? Well, every day is different, but I do have a strict uh, time schedule that yeah. I adhere to, and um, that helps me stay mentally balanced as mm. well as, you know, otherwise you're just, like I have a strict policy of no one can call me after 11 o'clock with business stuff or text me because people will take advantage of that if they know that you were, are a workaholic. Well, she's probably doing a TikTok around that time as well, so her phone's being out of use. So. <laughs> now I'm working <laughs> until <laughs> two in the morning. That, yeah, I knew it, I just but knew it. I don't want anyone to bother me because <laughs> how I structure my day is that, um, so firstly I get up, at 9 a.m. Now that's late, I understand, and but there's a reason for that. So I get up at 9 a.m. and um, or 8 30, and I'll spend half an hour in bed. Mm. Just there's certain podcasts that I like to listen to, and uh, Killer just, Killer podcast, come yeah, on, yeah, of course. First thing, <laughs> and then, um, you know, I'll put on a bit of uh, it depends what I'm in the mood for. I might put some Russell Brand on, I might put some Jordan Peterson on, mm. I might put some Oprah, whatever it is, I'm feeling really inspiring people to be waking up to there's loads of great podcasts like that. i love mm. joe rogan mm. absolutely love him mm. so um you know I'll, I'll watch but then there'll be more sort of brainiac podcasts that are about neurons and your brains and neurology mm. and psychology and stuff so it depends how i feel in the morning so i'll put the podcast on more for like company but it does start to wake the old brain mm. up then i get out of bed at nine and then uh feed my dog take care of her make a cup of tea boil two eggs because I like eggs. And, um, you know, it's good. It, it get All that stuff just gets me going in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then um, I work on emails probably from, I would say, 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Yeah. And then I go work out for two hours. Does that, Would the email include the WhatsApps and the group things and the... XYZ. No, this is strictly email, strictly three emails. email accounts. I've got my email, the team proper email, which is for the web subscribers my tribe then i've got the promo for <laughs> dj rap which is all promos and stuff like that and other things so is there a schedule within the schedule so you've got the, you've got to keep up with what's going on in each yeah so the emails take precedent they get done first because that's all my business sync licensing all the things mm. that i'm doing then i break one o'clock go to the gym and then i'm back at three then i walk the dog because i want to have three quarters of an hour where i live there's beautiful lakes and stuff and it's green and it just centers me mm. then i come back and then i work from i would say probably four o'clock to mm, 10 10 o'clock and that's still in the office doing the adma, admin stuff that could be anything from designing merchandise to handling vinyl that's coming out to uploading label releases to doing artwork to editing videos to you name it anything that's in my world doing that stuff um, organizing the goodies and content uh, scheduling all my social media for the month uh, things like that I, I'm, are you guys I'm, feeling underachieved yet come on this and then is I crazy eat. Then I eat, I have a light, because uh, sometimes I forget to eat. I try to have a salad in the day, but then I'll have a salad or a light dinner. And then I hit the studio, and then I go to bed at two. What if? And then I watch TikTok till three, yeah. 30 till four, which so, is why okay. I wake up at nine. <laughs> DJ rap, right, so. That's a typical day in the week, and then the weekends is gigs. Well, that's what I'm just going to say. What if there was a curveball Thursday, Wednesday night that you got? A... It's fine, just roll with it. But yeah. what happens to the schedule? Like... When you wake up at three in the morning, oh, sorry, three in the afternoon after getting home at six, that was quite... I don't do that. I wake up the same time no matter how much Does that sleep. hurt? That's... Well, my dog will hurt if she's not fed. <laughs> true, true. I am a mother in that sense. Yeah. I wake up knowing that she needs to be fed, so that that just happens. Um, and, yeah, I just, I just, I'm used to it, you know. I've probably not slept properly. Well, that's not true. I do sleep well, and I'm, I, sleep, I have no problem sleeping, but I'm... Up since what 1987 <laughs> who's had a good night's sleep since then <laughs> who's had great ears since then either i mean yeah. you know tonight this is rules around these 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 parts right yeah you have been djing for a very long time in the sense that most people would have started their careers reasonably i guess humble in a way bedroom djing but you jumped in at such a profound moment of lucky. jungle music. Well, before jungle was even. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. A thing, yeah. Dude, like, yeah, like those main room hardcore DJ, happy hardcore eras. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember like, what, I, 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 
I think the first record was Ambience, The Adored. Mad. And I, I'm, I'm sure someone will correct me because they'll look on Discogs, but it's either 89, 88 or 9, 90, 90 uh, no, it was comment before below, that was 88. Comment below, tell I us. think it was 89. Yeah. Yeah, on Raw Bass Records. And I, I mean, you know, that was still Acid House and I was going to Clink Street and gigs like that. And then, of course, the hardcore thing came along and, yeah, it was amazing. You know, you had Eclipse and... All yeah. these great Shelleys yeah. and yeah, yeah, this yeah, wonderful yeah. movement, and then the whole jungle thing, sort of, you know, 1991. Oh, you're taking me back. Yeah. Taking me back. But I think I was lucky. I was there at the right time, mm. um, you know, and uh, Carpe Diem, I seized the moment, mm. and it was a good moment. And I, I don't think we'll ever have anything like that again. You know, mm. it was such a wonderful time to be in. And the fact, you know, I was thinking this today when I was walking up here, I was thinking, I, I, I remember my actual thought was how lucky that someone still wants to do a podcast with you. Hey. This. No, but think about that. I don't mean it poor me. I no, mean no. how lucky that you're still relevant and people are still interested after like so long. I mean, that most pop stars don't even have that. You know, it, the DJs yeah. like, you know, Frost, Fabio, my, my you know, my, my friends and boys that I've grown up with we all realise how lucky we are to mm. still be doing this. Um, yeah. But for me, it's really important not to be just stuck in the jungle trap. Mm. That's why I do a lot of new music and I'm constantly, dive, you know, being, I guess, mm. synthesising my music with pop and vocals mm. and did that with Learning Curve when I was signed to Sony mm. because mm. the last thing I want is just to be playing the same records over and over again. Now, I love them. Man, you really have it, had a great life. It's yeah. important to, yeah, it's important to move forward because, you know... And that's why I like to work with new artists and bring them through mm. and, and do that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Now you got me thinking. A lot of questions, particularly from that era. If we don't, if you don't mind, we stay on the uh, the, 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 the the more earlier. No, of course era. not. That's where it came from. So let's talk about the. It, it may feel a little bit seepier and a little bit out there, like you know, because London, England was a very different place back then. The music uh, forecast was way different. Um, the landscape was very much illegal raves and um, the import of hip hop and that was slowly being overtaken over here in UK and Europe by this hardcore sound that then mutated into drum and bass and or break beer stuff. How, cause how did it feel being an up and coming DJ in London at that time? What were the obstacles? Yeah, it's funny. When I look at interviews of back in the day, firstly, I had this mental Cockney accent. So I was like, very like that, you know what I mean? Like, oh, <laughs> which was just was funny. Can you have some links? That sounds great. I, I was proper, honestly, I was proper like, yeah, well, I just love my music, in it. I'm just going to play. And I, I listen to it, and I'm like, oh, dear. Um, they grow up so quickly, don't I they? I think the thing is, is that I just look at that girl and I go, God, she was so confident. Mm. And I, I, I almost don't recognise myself because, you know, when you're young, you're bulletproof, aren't mm, you? You're immortal. Teflon, yeah. right? Nothing can touch you. <laughs> so I just was like, I knew that this was what I was going to do. And I, I turned around to my, you know, when I was squatting to my to my squat fellow model friends, I was like, yeah, I'm going to earn 500 pounds a week one day and, you know, I'm going to be a famous DJ. And I had no doubt in my mind, no doubt. So for me, it was like, when you say what were the obstacles, I, I honestly didn't believe there were going to be any. Mm. And I saw everything as a positive. So even though there were challenges like... Girls weren't allowed to play the main room, right, for example. That was a thing? Oh, absolutely. I was the first one to do it. Wow. That's my thing. I'm proud of that. Yeah, hold So tight. it was like, a, you know. A thousand percent. We were all put in the secondary room, yeah. you know, and yeah. so the girls would be playing their records in the secondary room and you got the main boys in the main room and I would just be scowling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Cause, and so I remember that very first gig was uh, at Storia and uh, I was playing with the girls in the Keith Moon bar and this guy comes up to me and he was like, you know, sir, how you doing rap? And I was like, it's all right. And he was like, well, what do you mean it's all right? And I was like, well, look at these decks. For a start, they're Fisher Price. I mean, I don't even know. Are they built from Lego? Like, what? you know, needles, like crap and everything. And he goes, what's your problem? And I said, my problem is I'm good enough to be in there and I want to be in there. Mm -hmm. And he just almost patted me on the head. He went, well, I'm the promoter that booked you. <laughs> and darling, No. Really? Uh, that was it. But but he was he laughed. He thought it was funny. So now six weeks. Name on, and shame. What's his name? So now six weeks on, <laughs> he's a good guy. Wait for it. All right. So okay. now <laughs> six weeks on, he'd come up to me every week. He'd be like, 
Hello, DJ. Crap. Still moaning about everything. I'll be like, still moaning. You're still crap. This is rubbish. The decks are tonker. And, um, this became like a rival, a proper band. It, it became a joke between us. Wow. And then one oh, yeah. night, Fabio, who I just love, 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 just basically, I don't know why, didn't turn up for a set. And um, he came in and, and the promoter said, you better be as good as you say you are. He goes, go on. And that night we made history because it was the first time a female was ever allowed to play the main... Yeah, if they ain't giving you goosebumps, yes. you're on the wrong show. That's and then I <gasps> got fired four weeks later because I asked for the same pay as the boys. No way. <laughs> and I remember at the time my agent, which was Sarah at Groove Connection, I love her, she's awesome, big up Sarah. She's like, who do you think you are, Fabio? And I was like, but... But if I'm good enough to play, What's I'm good money? enough to get yeah. the same money. And, it, you know, that's how I, naive I was in those days. I was, and my mouth got me into so much trouble. I was so mouthy. Really? Oh, I've had to work on that for years. But, really? Um, really? Yeah. But then what happened, I was gutted because I lost that booking. But then what happened was that every promoter and their mother suddenly was like, we want to have the first girl to ever play yeah, the yeah, main yeah. stage. And, yeah, yeah. and I became sort of this, I'm not token because I was good enough, but... It became a it became like a, the gimmick for the promoter to say first time ever, mm. you know. So it worked to my advantage. Yeah, course, so when you yeah. say what obstacles, yeah. whilst the door was open because of my gender, mm. at the same time, you know, you've got to be able to walk through that door and deliver, right? But mm. I didn't. I'm going to say now that there are more obstacles today in this day and age than there ever was for me back in the day because. <sighs> I made hit records. No mm. one ever didn't play my record because I was a girl. Mm -mm. So where were the obstacles? Mm. I was mm. a producer, so I learned to produce. I spent so much time in studios making tea, coffee, cutting to tape, learning how it worked. Whilst other girls were probably more interested in boys at that age, I was interested in MIDI. Mm. <laughs> MIDI and SIMTI <laughs> <laughs> and time codes and wires and, you know, tying up my MIDI with me. You know, yeah. But the point is I was interested in... in, in, in production and mm. i still am i'm obsessed with it i still have lessons to this day wow i'm still trying That's to be so better sick flame holder a flame holder big up charlotte devney big up mills all the all the girls Love new generations you know yeah and but, v dubs Way. yeah hold tight all the girls exactly all the girls but you know you, it's harder for them yeah. it's harder for them i think i think a lot of them will look up to you as somebody that kind of pioneered the ground that helped forge Certain myself and the other ladies, change. Storm, oh, you know, chemistry, of course, oh, and tie, of course, Tam's in and yeah. Smoking Joe, wow, and wow, all, wow. The, all the girls. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of amazing female Big DJs at the same time, it wasn't just me. And mm. and you know, the, the thing is, is that like I, I think that the obstacles sometimes I think we almost can make it harder for ourselves. Yeah. Like, you've got certain people saying, I don't believe that. For any job or career, there should be a quota that's fixed. There should be this many females. There should be this many. There. I think the equality should be there, but the mm. best person should get the job. Mm. So when I hear people complaining about um, not enough female DJs on, I, I, on on a gig, I think, you know, firstly, you've got to take a look at the DJs that are on the flies. They're all producers in their own right. Mm -hmm. They've been OGs for a long time. They run a label. They're relevant. They're consistently putting out hits. Mm. So you can't just be a DJ. You do have to produce. Mm. And secondly, if your productions are great, a label will take them on. Now, just be great. Just be great. Mm. And also you've got to be good at, and I know that sounds, I'm not being frivolous and throwing it away, but you do have to be great because take a look at the bar. It's mm. really high. Ridiculously high. It's not just, drum and bass producers are the best producers in the world. That hands down. It's the hardest music to make. I'm having currently lessons from two different people because sound design has changed so much. And mm. even though I'm one hell of a writer and I'm a mm. good producer, yes, I'm not where I want to be. And mm. I won't stop until I can do the things that I hear. You know, I'll download a track and... Oh, there's so many good producers trying to mm. guys kill me. <laughs> and I'll be like, how did he do how did yeah. he do that then? Mm. And then okay, what how you know and, how, and what's going on? We'll tear the track apart and we'll sit there and we'll mm. work it. I still work to this day really hard on it, you know. Paying dues, isn't it? You know, it's Pain. never done. Yeah. So what I'm saying is you've got to be great, but then there's not just that. These days the expectation is that look at it from a label's point of view, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You get a demo. The demo is an email. It's badly written with a smiley face. You love story about how you live somewhere it rains. So if you're locked in a basement, first off, okay, you're crazy. I don't want to deal with you. So how Have you, you experienced these before, Rap? Absolutely. Oh, I got an email from someone. 
And it was like, hello, I live in a basement in Manchester. It rains a lot, which is why I make all this music. And yeah, my brother did this and my mother commits suicide. And I was just like, look, I, I get it. You've had a tough song, life. But I don't need your neurosis because I'm, I'm trying to work with people mm. that aren't going to demand so much of my time so totally. I can give the time to the, the music that they've given there me, you go. not handling them or mm -hmm. wiping their bottoms, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, how you send a demo. Then it's like the first thing, if I get a demo and it's like, hey, I've got this private SoundCloud link, you know, love your label, love your mm. work since this record, because flattery will get you. <laughs> Come on. And, you know, but that just shows that you know a little bit about the label. I can't mm. tell you how many hip hop mm. people send me their records. Mm. Really? Yo, rap, like... Check out my beats. I'm like, I don't think so. Firstly, I'm not a hip hop label. So, so know the label that you're sending the music yeah, out yeah. to. And then, so, so let's just say you get the, de the, the introductory email right and you're, you now sent me to a private link on your SoundCloud and now I go to your SoundCloud. There's three tunes on there, not 50, please. Mm -hmm. There's three tunes on there and they're amazing. This is wow. like 101, what this to is, do. This is looking good, right? Yeah. So then you look up their social media, not oh. a dicky bird. Yeah. Okay, so now what does that tell me? This person is great in the studio. They're great doing this, but they're not great at like promote. So that all falls on me. Now that's great if you've got the resources yeah. and you're a bigger label and that's yeah. good. But you need to work with people. There's an artist right now that I am uh, proud to say, I feel like, I don't want to say I've discovered him, but I kind of have. His name's Moisen. He's Moisen. so... He's phenomenal. I have him at every one of my residencies. We work on music together and he is such a talent. But he's not just a talent in the studio and he's not just one of the best DJs I've ever heard in my life because he absolutely is. But he works his social media. He works his camera work. He knows how to take footage. He does... And that's the kind of person. That's, the, that's exactly. That's it. who I will invest Got a my head time for in. different things. Yeah. Knows what he wants. He understands he's a brand. Mm. And so you know, the thing is, that's the kind of artist that I'm just like. This person wants to work, mm. and he wants it badly. Mm. And so you know, that's what you look for. That fire. Mm. You look for a younger version of yourself, I guess. Yeah. You know, like what would this? What is it? Is he prepared to work, or does he just want to sit and roll a joint and make music? Because we all want to do that. I want to sit in the studio mm. and get bombed and do nothing but make music. Mm. But making music is the treat I allow myself mm. after all the other discipline stuff is out of the Survival's way. Survival's the real game. That's not the music. I get you. Well, music doesn't really even make you that much money. No. You know, it's all the other things that are tied within the tree mm -hmm. of music. Yeah. You know. And before you know it, it all comes together in a month Thanks and you make Spotify it Spotify for that. Love that you just... just yeah, yeah, just squeeze the life out of us. and Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just, you know, all this streaming stuff, I, I, I don't care. I really couldn't give to whatever mm. uh, because it's it's not right mm. and it's not fair no. and it's not fair to charge a 10 pound or nine pound subscription they know it as well. and of course they know it and so you know and Fair i enough. really just uh, but there's so many things that aren't fair it's the music business it's not the friend business but i just think you know talk about killing people you know i spent mm. five thankless hours accounting to all my artists the other day because it's june so we count in june and december <clears throat> and you know it, it, it's it's difficult to send royalty statements showing how many streams they've had mm. hundreds of thousands mm. showing them what that really means and i don't send them a blank piece of paper with numbers that no one understands mm. i send them because cygnus my distributor the best distribution company in the world come in on the world oh my god Talk that day. Shit. oh i was in the ingrews before absolute nightmare um <coughs> and cygnus yeah i do call people out <laughs> Cool it out. And so it makes a great conversation, man. Well, you know, yeah. if you actually care about the artists you represent, and Cygnus mm. do, they make it so easy for you to account. You just download the PDF so that, so the artists can see the breakdown from the distribution mm -hmm, company, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not some white piece, piece of paper that yeah. comes through with, with loads of bits and bits and bits. You're like, well, okay, yeah. but I don't understand. But this is the back end. So you mm. see that. It's amazing. Mm. You know, so, but it's hard because people go, but I had 150,000 streams. I don't understand. And I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, hun, you know. Yeah. It's full of, it's, it's a lawless world. Is music at best of times. Yeah. And, but, and that's part of the But that's of the what you need in order to, <laughs> long winded way of saying, mm. you know. Strings to your bows, essentially. Yeah. Get your strings to your bows on. It isn't easy. It was a lot easier before because we had pirate radio station yeah. and you could sell 80,000 copies of vinyl and vinyl is still a great money mm. maker, you know. And jungle, drum and bass, um, for me, it's its its, its own crazy ecosystem of um, you're feeding the 
the club, you're feeding the rave with ammunition. The DJ takes the ammunition and fires it out. And either people like it based on crowd response or they don't. That is a very, it's, it's a very unique scene. Mm. And not, I, I, I trouble myself sometimes trying to figure out well, what other genres really do that. Dubstep had a go at it. Reggae may have had that with the dub plate culture, but we're talking about 2022. Mm. There's only drum and bass, isn't there? Like I can't think of any genres that really that do, do it like what that. That, that 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 make the re- you see or break a record in front of you. Yeah, something. yeah. I think I think it's a little different because it, when you watch a DJ play a set properly, mm. you know someone that understands the arc of a journey and and how to move a crowd and make it happen. Like you know, I was watching Fabio play the other night at. Big up Fabio. Bigs up. Come on. At the, at, and Groove Rhino, come on. All of them. At the proper ammo thing and just mm. watching, you know, someone that I grew it, well, grew up with but admired mm. from as a 14-year-old girl onwards, you know, watching these guys frost all of them. And, you know, you watch them play and you're just like always jaw mm. on the floor. Mm. It's just like, I remember I played at Rage. Big up Charlotte for that one. And, I'm, and I feel like I didn't have a very good set because I was so nervous and this doesn't happen very often, but sometimes you get musical impotency. <laughs> oh, God, I <laughs> Where you're that. so nervous <laughs> that you're in your head the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and you forget to enjoy it because you're just watching these great DJs mm. and they're so good at what they do. And uh, you're just like, oh, I should have played this record. And, and you're yeah, yeah, too yeah, in your yeah, head, yeah, yeah. you know, and it happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, when you see a great DJ doing that, those records, you know, they, they those boys broke and made records, and I don't think that happens in any other genre, no, if no, that was no, your question. But, thousand percent. You know, the, the, the difference is they would make or break a record. Mm. Yeah. And it keeps on going. It does. Doesn't it? You were uh, travelling out to LA and whatnot, you must have experienced a lot of that kind of on-the-ground uh, cultural impact of, like, hip-hop and, and whatnot. Because drum and bass, as much as I've t- toured out there doing it, um, it's a very... The, the, they're like a they're, they're like a tribe of people that go and check out drum and bass and rave. Uh, you know, hip hop is along with country and rock and roll is the dominant force, isn't it? Mm. You must have experienced a lot of culture clash where uh, where genres and music's concerned. I think it was fun because I would incorporate like Slayer or rock into some of my intros. So when I started my drum and bass set, I'd start with a Slayer, and people would be head banging, and it's a completely different culture. Uh, playing out there than it is here. So you can get away with different kinds of music, but I think you're a much better DJ when you're playing in England because you've got, there's, a, there's a different, there's a London set. It's, a, it's yeah, an yeah, English. Yeah, 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 yeah. Firstly, this is an English sound, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, the Americans created the hip hop and, and house obviously from Chicago yeah. and stuff like that. Um, you know, from Tyree Cooper days and Fast Eddie mm. and all those wonderful people. Big up Fast Eddie. Yeah, hold tight, Fast um, Eddie. Damn. But, you know, jungle drum and bass and from mm. the reggae roots, it, it, this is an English sound. So when you hear it in England, it's very different mm. from when it's in America. It's almost yeah. like it's all about bass here. Yeah. And it's a bit more about the, the mids and the top sort of melodies in America. It's a bit more melodic. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, I, did, I didn't... I mean, I was so busy touring when I was in America that I didn't really experience much hip hop or any of that stuff but um my life was on the road consistently for like 20 years but um I, you know you walk into an english gig and you just you hit that sub bass mm. it's just london yeah yeah or england rather not thousand london. percent and also we've got to get big up the likes of diesel boy big up uh question oh, mark him. He was so craze. Much fun. yeah like all these guys they they really did craze is incredible as well yeah Crossing over, tell me, I mean, you mentioned Slayer, like, was this the kind of, this is the kind of crossover thing that I think is what gravitates um, people that are into certain genres into the fold of drum and bass. Drum and bass is this way of, like, even a remix or just butting on, like, a sample somewhere and all of a sudden it's, you know, hammering the, the, the drums and the, the snares and everything, you know. That's, that's the beauty of drum and bass. It's so... You can mix it up and it's so malleable into different genres, isn't it? Well, I just watched Stranger Things and I just finished a drum and bass remix of Kate Bush running up that hill. Timing. And I was like, it's getting mixed down tonight. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm just, just, uh, yeah, I just, uh, you know, being able to incorporate, well, I did that with Learning Curve, but it was all Mm. about incorporating different styles and I love that. I mean, drum and bass is quite Mm. formula. Mm. So I think what's interesting is when you see 
amazing artists like breaking away from that a little bit and adding the the things that just take it to another level i love that god i love that yeah mm, me too right. i don't like when it's all the same constantly yeah. i've it, it can be a bit boring but there is a formula you sort of you know you can't get away from the bass and the mm. way it needs to drop yeah yeah it yeah. has to drop like core principles you, of the songs yeah you want to yes. throw a shoe in the air <laughs> <laughs> yeah or if it's not good throw a shoe at them yeah <laughs> no don't do that <laughs> So that's the future then. So you, you, you're mixing new tunes, things are on the way. You've got new television programs emerging with TikTok and this is your future. Yeah, this I, think, is I think right now there's a committed plan for at least the next two years um, of working on this, you know, YouTube show. Um, you know, the thing about social media, I think you and I have had conversations about this before. It's like, mm. okay, think about all the views that I've had in the last three years. Mm. People really just like to watch. Mm. And it's very, it can be very disheartening for artists who have to work so hard on their social media. For sure. And then they realise how little of that actually transcends mm. to maybe your merch store or whatever mm. you're working on or trying to sell. So I, I think the best advice I can give anyone is try to do it because it's like part of your routine. You just, you know, don't let it overtake you because it can be really bad for your mental health. Mm. You know, if, if I don't want to post, don't, you know, don't, you know what I mean? Like I never post my private stuff. Mm. There's a line, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and also at the same time, you want to keep it real and not just be... Here I am having a holiday here in my life. So no one's life is like that. Yeah. You know, I'm the same as everybody else. I worry about my weight. I worry about how I look. I worry about I have bad days. I have good days. I have days where I'm just screaming into a pillow because things aren't going right. And then there are days where it's so it's amazing. I can't believe that this is my life. Mm. Everyone is the same. Mm. Um, so, you know, don't always believe everything you see on social media. And I love TikTok for that because it's so much more real. Yeah, you know, it's more fun. It's fun. Cats and cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, jumping you know, off cliffs and things like that. So, yeah, if you can find something that's easy for you to post mm. that that brings joy to other people, like my thing on TikTok is, you know, where were you when this record was happening? She's and the I, best. And man. I play a record, and everybody's like, <laughs> "Oh, shagging me, missus behind the toilet." Hey, <laughs> what? And everyone's like, "Oh, okay, awesome." And it was just she can flex that accent, that London accent, when she wants to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was up north, milking took gal, but yeah. It was uh, you know, there's lots of funny, it, and it makes me laugh because I read the comments and I just think this is brilliant, you know, mm. and it's just fun. But also, it, you know, it, it, it does take time to do all the work um, mm. that you're doing. But I do believe that there's a cutoff point where I'll go, this is either working mm. or it isn't. And then mm. I'll say, well, it's time to towel it in and go live in Thailand or do what I want to do. We'll see. And the freedom of that as such is that, you know, it's the, the cross you bear is being a creative and thugging through, you know, the, the unexpected that it's the forecast, but then there is that reward of, like, choice. The problem is I'm not done yet. There you Much go. Much as I wish I would be. I wonder what's wrong with me that I'm still as hungry as mm. ever before. I'm, I feel like I haven't had a chance to make the music I really want to make yet, which is why I'm having the lessons I want to do, because I just feel that, you know, there's... I haven't even started to scratch the surface of what I feel I'm capable of. And I've got six unreleased albums from back in the day that once I start to produce those the way that I see them in my head oh or hear them in my head. God. So it's like, I just, you I'll know, just hope I don't fury. die yet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just, well, you're on some Prince level. I'll just keep them archived. <laughs> oh, I have. I've got, I've got uh, I think, Mad. six to 700 tracks. Stop it. No, not music for years. And I filmed all of it as well. So I've got little, you know, those little yeah. like, DAT tapes, you know, from the old camcorders. Yeah. And I've got DATs and stuff, so much stuff. So, yeah, you know, I've always kept it. And then when I did the tribe and the content, I was like, oh, I've got this. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, do you have enough content? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm keen. This is crazy. Yeah. That's... I actually do a thing on my website, but this is for the VIPs, where they get access to my unreleased demos and I build them a dub plate <gasps> and they pay for the dub plate and then there's only allowed to ever be four of them. So they get one of, and they can pick what they want on each side out of the playlist. So they get their own custom dub plate of unreleased stuff that will never oh, be released. Not today, rap. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, you just, machine. It's fun. You love it, don't you? I do. do you, is, it, is it a test of your own tenacity or is it just a, is, is there an athleticism to, to this? Uh, I think it's just about if you look at anybody who's successful, yeah. let's take anyone from, 
I don't know, J Lo, Madonna, right. any guy, any yeah. any any person who you know that none of them don't work hard. So I think as R uh, Ronaldo says, you know, talent is great, but there's no hard work behind it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. means nothing. So I think. I am in competition with myself to be the best I can be. Mm -hmm. And I get angry at myself when I'm not where I want to be. So mm. that's why I work hard in the gym, work hard in everything that I do. But also there's also a certain expectation and realization that you can't look like a 20 year old forever. You can't, you have to also be at peace with yourself and be realistic so that you're not driving yourself mental. Now, can I be mm. a better producer? Absolutely, so that mm. doesn't stop. But do I want to spend five hours in a gym a day and eat a salad a day? Do I bollocks? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, there's a certain like, okay, just be the best that you can be. Mm. But also be not happy because happiness, there are moments of happiness, but be content all the time, now mm. that's achievable. Levels of contentment are achievable. Mm. But if you're like, I just want to be happy, well, you know, subjective th that's subjective to whatever times. is happening in circumstances and it's tied to circumstances. But you can definitely create a world of your own where you are the center of that world where you can achieve a good balance of, of, of contentment most of the time. And that's what I'm striving for. And also to be great at what I do. Yeah. Fine. Well, you listen, you turn around stuff like no one's business. <laughs> and as a fan first, thank you, because it's awesome that you've got 700 tunes that has just been f f fired out at dub plate for your patrons. You care so much about your audience and your fans and people. Well, actually, you consider your tribe your friends. They are. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the Thank podcast. Thank you. It's wonderful to DJ uh, Rap in the house. You're amazing yeah. as well. You got to teach me some of that. <laughs> I want some of those beatboxing. This is what I think. Go on. Some beatboxing. MIDI. There you go. And then we can put our sounds to it. I think you should sell those packs. Done. Done. There you go. Sign sealed delivered. You heard it here first. First, that's the one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. DJ Rap inside the place. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, without question, you know what we're to do. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Hey, that was awesome.